in the name of Jesus Jones. Get a watch. That's going to happen. There is not power in that word. There were some guys in the, in the Bible that later in the book of Acts that had this happen. They were trying to cast out demons. So they went up to this guy. And they're like, in the name of Jesus and Paul and other people, demons come out of him. And the demons turned out and looked at him and said, uh, we know Jesus, we know Paul, but we don't have a clue who you are. And they got up and beat him, with that, beat him up. <laughs> we stopped the illustration at that point. Thank you. Well done, Dave. So glad you did that. That was great. Hey, beat him up. Okay, what's the point? The point is, there's not power in that word. There's power in the reputation, the authority that Jesus has. Okay. The word is not some magical incantation. If you, if you watch TV, you'll see some guys that will be, you know, there's power in the name of Jesus. When you say, Jesus, demons tremble and fit. I'm telling you, if you walk down the street going, Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's not like there's some kind of spiritual, like, tidal wave happening in front of you as demons are leaping out of buildings and such as you walk down, okay? This is not what we're talking about. See, where that comes from is we want to have this mystical mind control over Jesus. If I say Jesus, then he has to do something, you know. I walk up and go, Jesus, be with Joel. And, you know, be, Jesus, make Joel's hair pink. And boom, it's pink. Yes, I got power. That's so fun. God, I'm not playing that game. I think it'd be cool to see Joel with pink hair still. But that's not the point. The point is, look. The power is in being in relationship with Jesus and working in the place of Jesus. If I show up here and I say, yeah, hi everybody, President Obama sent me to tell you, all I can't show up. But if some dude drives up here in a black suburban and has like government issued cool paperwork and walks in and says, I got a message from President Obama to you guys. Well, this is part of the stimulus package. I want to give you a million dollars. Divide it amongst yourselves as you will. Oh. And he hands a check, and it's got all. We take that sucker down to the bank and say, "It's in the name of Obama. Give me my cash." Give it back. All right. So the name, the power comes in relationship to the authority and the responsibility of the one whose name you carry. And this, and I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent, but, but if you're visiting your kick and tires on the God thing, this is going to be like, what's he talking about? I'm sorry, just kind of playing tic-tac-toe on some paper in front of you, but not the tablecloth. We talked about that earlier. Um, <laughs> there are some people, and, and I, don't, I don't say this to belittle the people on their belief, but they're dead wrong. There are people that believe that the name that you use for God is incredibly, incredibly important. And we are in error because we use words like Lord and God and Jesus. You should use the name Yeshua for Jesus, because that would be his Hebrew name. Or Yahweh, the name for God in the Old Testament. I believe that this falls under 2 Timothy 2.23. We're not going to, uh, you don't have to look there, we'll put it up on the screen. 2 Timothy 2.23, Paul says, Again, I say don't be involved in foolish arguments, foolish ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel with his kind to everyone be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. I think this falls directly under that command. This is a silly argument. If you believe this, I don't mean to offend you, I mean to tell you the Bible truth. Okay? And this may not be relevant to you, I'm giving you this as information because you're going to probably at some point walk into somebody like this who believes this. Okay? If that were the case, if we should only use the name Yeshua and Yahweh, then all the writers of the New Testament are in error. Because they use the word, the Greek word for Jesus, they have the letter J, they did not use the Hebrew word. They use the word for God, they use multiple names for God, one of them being Kyrios, which is the ge generic Greek name for God, which means authority, basically. It could be a judge, it could be a ruler, it could be God. And they consistently use these words throughout the entire New Testament. So... If we're wrong, they're wrong. And I'm pretty confident putting my foundation and my stand on the writers of the New Testament. The next line of argument will be, well, the New Testament is corrupt, and we don't actually have what was written. 
We have documents that go back to about 30 years when many of the books of the New Testament were written. Before there was any conspiracy, before there was any powers of, uh, or, or what have you, any stuff that people want to fabricate that say, hey, the, the Bible has been corrupted and we don't really know what it says, and so the Bible is in error because it doesn't agree with what I believe is true. Okay? The end result of that line of reasoning is God is so weak he cannot protect his own book. And if God is not strong enough to protect his own word, then we have much bigger issues than the proper name of God to use. We, have, we serve a weak God. Okay. But biblically, that foundation does not stand. And that really comes back to the fact that I think that sometimes we get caught in trying to understand God and wanting to have a control over God. So if I have God's name correct, then I'm going to be in a right relationship with him, and then he's going to do what I tell him to do. No, I'm doing what God tells me to do because I'm in, under authority of Jesus Christ, led by Jesus Christ. Okay? It's not about me, it's about his power. But Peter said, verse 6, back to Acts chapter 3. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. That is, my friends, the mission and the passion of the experience. Get up and walk. To enter into a relationship, to share what we have, and to see people's lives changed by the power of God. That is why we exist. On a side note, again, that's why I'm so passionate right now about us building first service. And again, I've said this, and I'll continue to say it. We're going to be asking for some commitment here in the future. But I believe that some of us are being called once again to first service. I talked about this before. Today, first service is really big. It's almost bigger than second service. It's exciting. I don't know if that was because of the baby dedication or because people are getting this message. But the problem is, is see, we're so happy to be in a relation. Now, look at the survey results. Basically, it comes down to this. One, 9 o'clock is too early. Yeah. What time do you go to work every day? That's my question. Secondly, um, <laughs> secondly, is we're so afraid, and this is the dominant reason, we're so afraid of being broken apart in our relationships with each other because I love this community that what we're doing in essence is creating a wall that says we won't let anyone else into relationship. We're not going to look at anyone else and say, hey, look me in the eye. And we're holding on so tight that we can't let go. I'm going to tell you, if we hold on so tight we'll lose what we have. Because that's what happens with this, with this lame man. He has a choice right now. He can hold on to his lameness, or he can get up and walk. And if he held on so tight, he would have died laying a cripple. But instead, verse 7, then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. As he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. 